truly, truly, he is wonderful. The reason being, he's God all by himself. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We his people and the sheep of his pasture. He is worthy to be praised because he is God. It is he who said, in the beginning, let there be. He is wonderful, church. He is wonderful. The magnificent to be praised. Today's uh, sermon is coming from Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. And that's one sentence, by the way. It differs from Paul's other writings. I mean, he's writing to the Corinthians. He's writing about problems in the church. Writing to Galatia writing about false doctrine, people being duped. But this particular epistle, he's speaking about God and his work and our relationship in his work and our relationship to him. In fact, it's a eulogy, a doxology. A eulogy means to speak well. And so he, Paul is speaking well about God in his pre-plan, present plan, and things in the future. It had a beginning, a middle, and an eschatological spin. That means future time. Most of us, unfortunately, spend our time focused on stuff down here. And the stuff down here will deteriorate. It will mislead you, it will misguide you, it will disappoint you, and ultimately it will abandon you. But Paul reminds us in Colossians, Set your affection on things above. If you be in Christ, set your affection on things above. But the only way to set your affection on things above, you have to have the focus to help you do that. You know, if you go to the doctor and you got, you got a different kind of vision, you got nearsighted, farsightedness, and if you don't have the right prescription and have the right kind of glasses, you just can't see what you need to see. And so the only way to set your affection on things above is, is through the word of God. You have to be a constant student of the word of God to remind us that our home is not here. We're just transient citizens passing through. No, we, we didn't come to stay. At a few sunsets and sunrises, they, they used to live there. They used to work there. He used to be her husband. He used, she used to be his wife. Time is transient, my brothers and sisters. So Paul is, is blessing us and letting us know what God has done, what God has done for each one of us. And so he used the word blessed. By the way, in the New Testament, every time you see the word blessed, it's a reference to God, with the exception where it's used in the Beatitudes of Matthew 5. That, that's a different word. That's a different Greek word for that. But when we see blessed in the New Testament, it means God. Look at the works of God. Look, look what it says here. Blessed be the God our Father. Blessed be the God our Father. In this particular time in human, in human history, fathers had ultimate control. Do you know a father could kill his son? He could kill him. Yeah, a father could kill his son. Ordinarily, the, the first son would be get, inherit everything. The father could even get a slave to be his son. A father could put a son over him. Yeah, he had, he had the ultimate authority. Whatever his decision was, he made that decision. And if you want a slave to be over him, and he'd be subservient to the slave, he could do that. That was in the power of a father. But our father, he is a wonderful father. He's a glorious father. But our father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, see the relationship, father, son. Yes, Jesus, before, before, before the word was, I am. In Genesis, when the Lord, in Exodus, that is, when the Lord sent Moses down into Egypt. And the audience says, well, well who sent you, Moses? And he, he didn't write no letter. He didn't give him a note. He said, just tell them I am sent you. Amen. Yeah, Amen. I am from everlasting to everlasting. And so we praise God for who he is. Amen. But look, look at the, this, this verse 1. It set the stage. It set the parameter. It, it serves as an as introduction to all that God has done for each one of us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Pick up on this. Look at it. With some stuff. Hello. A, a few things, enough to get by with. Who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing? Yes, sir. 
Where? In heavenly places in Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah. In this world, you will have lack and you have want. You do your best you can to come up short on some end. But look at what God has done for us. We are rich untold. We have richness untold. But we are so focused on what's going on down in the world, we don't even know it. We act like we are, we are, we are, we are past poverty. How you doing? Oh, I'm just hanging. Don't hang. You may get hard. Yeah. God has blessed us with spiritual bliss, blessings in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This, this was on part of God's part. Yes. Yes, in these blessings, they was, they was, they was endorsed at, at the post-resurrection. Now, God had already planned it before, before the when and where. Before it stood on the platform of nothing called the cosmos into being. Yes, this was already in the mind of God. Uh, his creation of humanity was not an afterthought. He said, well, I got all these animals. I got the ocean. I got the sea. I got the sun. I got the stars. And what else can I do? No, this was already in the mind of God to create his crown in creation, which is humanity, which would be able to respond to him. The trees don't talk back to God. The whale don't talk to God. The buffalo don't talk to God. The fish don't talk to God. But God wanted to have creation that could respond to his love, the love that he had manifested toward us. God commended his love toward us and that while we was yet sinners, he died for us. And he wanted us to show him some gratitude, some praise and thanksgiving because of who he is. Not because of what we get from it. Most Christians just praise God for the benefit. Why you say that, preacher? Because it come out of our testimony. But God bless me with this, and God bless me with that, and God bless me with that. Well, what about thanking God for being God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. But don't put that in front of who God is. God is bigger than his blessing. God is bigger than his benefit. He is God all by himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at it, look at it. And I, I said that God's creation, that we were not an afterthought. Look at verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. That's God. Hallelujah. Who could do that but God? You can't see around a corner. You don't know what the next second is going to be. But because God is God, he can do it. Because he's omniscient. He knows everything. He can do it because he's omnipotent. Because he got all power, he can do it because he's omnipresent everywhere at the same time. What a God we serve. Yeah, yeah Christians should be excited. If anybody in the world should be excited, it should be Christians. Because our relationship with God, because who he is and what our relationship is to him. Yeah, we should be excited, always praising God. On, 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 a, on a Sabbath day, we should have a testimony. Yeah, yeah. In the dark cloud, we should have a testimony. Because we're not looking at the situation. We're not looking at our circumstances. But we're looking at God who's able to remedy the situation. Who's able to alter anything. Who can change the heart of a king. We're looking at God. So we got to refocus. We got to refocus, retool, redirect it. And the word of God will do that for us. Yes, yes. Before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy. And without blame before him in love. Yeah, yeah. He made it possible. Don't, don't get excited because the God called you because you was holy. No, you were not holy. He was wretched, simple, and undone. But he saved us. And through his grace and through his mercy, he allowed us to attain to that. Yes, yes. And he wanted us to be blameless. Well, well, how can a sinner be blameless? Yeah, yeah. We were sitting in the generation of sin. We was in the cells of generation of sin. We was in prison from generation, from, from the experience of Adam. Every succeeding generation was in the prison of sin. And nobody could get us out. Nothing could break out. No way. No way. But look at God. Look at God, what he did for us. He brought us out of the prison of sin. And I'm so glad that it did it with our strings. Do you know he could have brought us out and said, well, uh, you're a sinner, you're wretched, no gun, no good, but I'm going to bring you out. But I'm going to put you on a 90-day probation. All of us, listen, all of us would have failed the test. We'd have to go right back where we were. But I'm so glad 
that the love of God is all encompassing. The love of God is forgiving. The love of God is entreating. He forgave us of all of our sins. Yes, yes. He didn't say, go back to jail. He didn't put us on probation. And then when we messed up, he said, well, I may think about letting you do it again, so I'm going to put you in detention. Sit over there. Sit over there for a while. And I'm going to see how you act when you get off the tension. He didn't do it. But he saved us. He saved us. He saved us for time and eternity. Yeah, we're saved. We're saved. How we say we saved by the blood of Jesus. We're saved by his blood. We've been purchased, bought, with, bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bless his holy name. Yes, yes, my brothers and sisters, have predestined us to be adoption to son by Jesus Christ to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We weren't worthy. We were born spiritual, without spiritual, with being perfect. But we was adopted into the family of God. Adopted. Adopted. As sons and daughters. Precious in the sight of God. Not looking at us as stepchildren, or second class, or third tier. But we are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Do you understand what God has said? Jesus said, you got what I got. That's exciting. You got what I got. All that my father has, all that is in heavenly places. You got it. And don't forget it. Yes, yes, after the resurrection, we went to sit on the right hand of the Father, interceding, making things ready because he's coming again. He's coming again, church. He's coming again. What did the angel, what did the angel tell the men on Mount of Olives after the post-resurrection? This same Jesus, this same Jesus, not another Jesus, but this same Jesus that you see us sitting up in the heavens in the clouds, he's coming back again. And he's coming for his church. Without spot or wrinkle. Yes, he's coming back. He's coming back. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. But why? How did he uh, uh, select us? We were selected out of the world. Not because we was better than anybody else. Don't you know there are a million people better than you are by example, precept? That's just putting it on the low side. I may press the point. There may be, a, out of the 7 billion people in the world, there may be 2 billion people better than we are by precept, for example. And yet, they're outside the will of God because they have not received Jesus. Look at God. Look at God. God operates on his own, on his own. Look at Moses. He sent him down to deliver. Look at Pharaoh. He hardened his heart. Look at Saul and David. He rejected Saul, but he received David. What did Saul do? He violated an offering. Look at David, a murderer, a liar, a cheater. But God said he's the apple of my eye. Look at God. You can't figure God out. God is absolutely, he's not subject to anybody to question him. He acts out of his own divine prerogative. Don't have no committed to my with God while you do that. He's God. And he acted out of his own capacity, not of his own will. So it is. Jesus received us out of the world unto his own self. How did he do it? According to his good pleasure. His good pleasure. But look, it's a paradox. It caused him to have a good pleasure. He had to go on the cross. He had to die for our sins. He had to suffer ignominious death. But what, it was for his good pleasure. Oh, yeah. He didn't necessarily want to do it. You. How you know? What did he say in the Garden of Gethsemane? If it's possible, remove this cup from me. But if not, I will bear it. Yes, he said it, and he did it. He got up yes, he that we may have life and more abundantly. Yes, yes. Now this verse 6 should make everybody shout. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. Too many silent Christians. Too many silent Christians. Too many silent Christians. It appears that the faith community is saying to the brother, sister next, next to them, shh. 
When you talk about the favor of God, shh. When you talk about the goodness of God, shh. When you talk about the mercy of God, shh. When you talk about the power of God, shh. When you talk about the protection of God, shh. Too many silent Christians. We should be witnessing every moment of our lives talking about the goodness of God, not talking about no weather, not talking about no sports team, not talking about no politics, but talking about the goodness of God and his favor. Look at God. Woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Look at God. Brought you from a mighty long ways. Yeah, there, we, there was dangers and unseen and unseen that we didn't even know of. There are diseases in this room right now that could take us out. But God is saying, don't touch my child. God is saying, that's mine. God is saying, go over, go on, and go around. Look at God. He sustains us every day. Every breath we inhale comes from God. That's why God deserves our best. He deserves our best. He merits our best. And anything less is heresy. Unfortunately, too many Christians in the church, they focus their eyes on the local church. They focus their eyes on the pastor. Oh, that old pastor made me mad. I'm not putting nothing in. You, ain't, you can't give the pastor nothing. The pastor ain't got nothing to give you. Yeah. He can preach the word. But all blessings come from God. Why you say that preacher? James says every good and perfect gift come from above. So we get it wrong. We get it wrong. We look at the wrong thing. We look at the wrong people. And we look in the wrong places. But I'm here to tell you today, you need to look up and see Jesus. You need, we need to look up and see Jesus. Why do you need to do that? Because he is the author and the finish of our faith. Everything that we have come from him. Everything that we are come from him. Don't tell me about what's yours and what you did. You can't do anything. You couldn't even bat your eye in the morning. Unless God said, wake him up. Wake up. Brains made of 10 billion cells. Several thousand things have to go through your body in a sub, sub, sub electrical pulses. Before you come out of slumber, you don't know where you are, just in a state as suspended in space. And yet God recollects you to wake up, my child. Wake up! You're able to flash your eyes, raise your head, raise your arm, sit on the edge of the bed, make a step. That's God! That's the faith of God, that's the love of God, that's the power of God, and that's the strength of God. He deserves our best. Don't be talking about, well, I got to pray about it. You don't pray about nothing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what the church say to Jesus. Lord, I'll give you opportunity to serve up and to speak to individuals speaking to you, but I got to go home and pray about it. Stop lying. Don't tear that line, church. Just say, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. But say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what Eli told him to say. Boy, I didn't call you. But if, it's, if, it, if, if, it, if it happened again, say, speak, Lord. We need to say, speak, Jesus. We need to get over ourselves. Get over our stuff. I hear conversations with people now. Well, it's about me and what I want and what I plan to do and what I'm, what I'm not fulfilled in. Forget about you. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And his will and his purpose for our lives. We exist for the glory of God. Do you know why we were created? Do you really know? Well, I, I, well, I, I'm created to express my talents and my gifts. I have a gift of teaching, gift of preaching, gift of, gift of all this, gift of service. Even the gift of miracles, not that exciting. We exist for the glory of God. We exist for the glory of God. Not for ourselves. Not for our wife. Not for our children. Not for our government. But for God, that's why we exist. He deserves our best. And he knows when we're giving it to him. We can shuck and jive each one with other. Oh, yeah, I'm tired. No, you're lying big time. I love the Lord. Lying. I love the Lord. I'm, I'm saved, sanctified, Full of the Holy Ghost, living above sin. Not true. Not true. But God loves us with an everlasting love. Yes. 
So Christians, let's move from being silent. Let's be proactive, willing to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a person with upper mobility, houses and lands and 401ks and all that kind of stuff, serving the king. And he thought he had it made, but he hadn't seen Jesus. Yeah, yeah. He hadn't seen Jesus. Isaiah, when he saw him, and he recognized his own character compared to what Jesus was, his confession was, I'm a man of unclean lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord prepared him. And guess what he said? Who will go for us? Send me. Do we have any semi Christians in the church today? We get ready to go on the streets, the street evangelism. Some people, oh, I can't go out there, I'm afraid. Well, why are you afraid? Did you read the scripture? What God has equipped us and dialed us with, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So why are you afraid to go? You should be afraid to go to any continent in, the, in this whole world. Because if you lose your life, you lose it for the glory of God. What does the scripture say? Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there's the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are reviled and persecuted for righteousness' sake. Listen to it. Listen. Listen to God talking. Listen to God talking. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For great, for great, for magnanimous, are their blessings. Yeah. Yeah. For so persecuted are they the prophets which before you. You know what? So I preached a sermon years ago about Christian boot camp. You know, don't, don't ever leave, don't ever go out, just stay around talking about some stuff. But God, some Christians can't go because they stuck on themselves. They stuck on their own little issues. Don't have time for God. Always got a complaint, always hanging out in the complaint department. Don't know where the praise department is. Don't know how to say, I thank you, Lord. Whatever happened, there's room for thanksgiving. Whatever happened, there's room for praise. Amen. What the Paul says in Thessalonians, in, every, in everything, give thanks. Well, what do you mean in that disaster? Give thanks because it could have been worse. You're not giving thanks because of what happened, but you're giving thanks because you still got breath to praise him. What we was in mind to do in Psalm 50? Let everything that have breath do what? Do what? Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Stop having to complain. Stop complaining. Stop looking at each other, talking about each other, talking about one another. But say, Lord, here I am. And so old folks say, I'm undone, Lord. I'm undone. I do the best I can, but still I come short of the mark. On my best day, I come short. You do too. But the old folks used to pray, Lord, here I am. If the pitcher, then they move for a magnificent reservoir. Fill my cup. Fill my cup, Lord, and let it overflow. Look at God. God deserves our best, my brothers and sisters. He deserves our best based on what he has done for us. He has redeemed. We have been redeemed. We have redemption through his blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not pigeon doves, not no bulls or cows. Gee, God gave himself that we may be free. That we may be free. Amen. That we may be free. Amen. Those whom the Son of Man have set free are free indeed. Amen. There are no more re- incarceration for the Christians. Circumstances may surround us, but we are free. Amen. If you don't believe it, ask Paul. When he was in the Roman jail, they could contain him physically, but they could not contain him spiritually. Amen. He was free. Yes, he was. Yeah. Dr. Martin Luther King was confined in the Birmingham jail. Yeah, they, the jailer thought they had power and authority over him, but he was free in his spirit. He was free in his mission. He was free in his purpose because he had met Jesus Christ. And not the masses did not deter him. What they said to him did not disappoint him. He stayed the course because God had put a purpose on him. God had put a calling on his life, and he was going to live it out until he met his death in Memphis. Yes, God is calling you and you and you. To stand up and say, yes, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. He blessed me. He protects me. He keeps me. 
Yes, he does. Bless his holy name. And if it made, what's the mystery of God? It, it, what is his pleasure? That he redeemed us from the pits of hell. That he redeemed us, all of this. Verse 10, talking about dispensation. And, and when, when the time came, when it was ready, God sent his son. And why did he send him? Why did he send him? It's right there in the verse. Why did he send him? He sent him to gather together one and all things in Christ. In other words, because of our sins, because of our rebellion, because of our reverence to God, it was out of control. And somebody had to check it. Somebody had to check it. An angel can check it. The prophets through the ages can check it. The missionary can touch it. The mother can check it. The preacher can check it. Only Jesus. Only Jesus could check it. And he came down to check it that he may do what? That he may bring all things in Christ. Both which are in heaven and earth. In who? In him. Yeah, yeah. Paul says all things consist because of him. No, no, it's not about the time frame, what's going on in, in the history. But it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Yes, it's all about him. Bless his holy name. In him also we have obtained inheritance. Well, we just read in the first verse that we have received blessings in spiritual places and heavenly places. This is a recapitulation. It's saying, it's just reinforcing what he already said. So be excited. Be excited. Look what he's saying. That you have received blessings. Blessings. Inheritance. It was predetermined by the wise counsel of God. Yes, that we, this we is for the Jewish community. But I'm so glad the Gentiles wasn't left out. Yeah, yeah, Paul talking about we, 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 we Jews. Look at it, look at it. That we who first trusted Christ should be to the praise of glory. In him, you, the Gentiles, me and you, Beverly, we have trusted after we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, in whom also having believed. Hello. Yes, sir. Sealed by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank sealed by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. We don't know too much about sealing. I only see if we know about the liquor, liquor letter, you know, seal it. That ain't the kind of seal we're talking about. Yeah. Look at God. God, what he bestows upon us. Jesus, what he provides for us and the Holy Ghost, what he applies to us. Yeah, yeah. The Trinity. Folks, I don't see no Trinity. About. Look at it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost in action. Bring forth his purpose and his will to his own glory, to his own satisfaction, to his own good pleasure. Yes, yes, my brothers and sisters. Who is the guarantee? Yeah, yeah, we got a guarantee. No, I'm not no good housekeeping. That stuff's a matter of writing for a commercial. I ain't talking about no good housekeeping. I'm not talking about no good seal of approval. I'm talking about a guarantee. I'm talking about assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus, man. Oh, what a foretaste of the divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what God has given us. He's given us a guarantee. Yeah, yeah. In the storms, a guarantee. In death, a guarantee. In disaster, a guarantee. In old age, a guarantee. In sickness, a guarantee. In health, a guarantee. In death, a guarantee. In suffering, a guarantee. In misunderstanding, a guarantee. In abandonment, a guarantee. He has given us a guarantee that he will be with us for time and eternity. All that the Father give to me shall come to me. And them that come to me I shall never cast out. What a guarantee. See about the Holy Ghost. Irrevocable. God said it and it's true. Bless his holy name. Well, preacher, how could that guarantee we be so sure? How, how, how was it sponsored? Let's think about it for a moment. Jesus Christ came down through 42 generations. Tabernacle on earth for about 30 some years. Walked on a 120 mile circuit. Preaching, teaching, healing, getting crazy folks out of the cemetery, giving them their license to preach, getting the dead man off a coffin, said, boy, go home with your mama. Lady with the issue of blood, spent all the money, said, you heal my daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cripple man, get up. 
Yeah, yeah. But he just didn't come for that. He just didn't come for the healing. He just didn't come for giving sight to the blind. He just didn't come for feeding the masses. You're on the side of a mountain. Why did he come preach? He came to bring salvation to humanity. He came to bring salvation. And so when did it start preaching? When did it start? It started on a Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, when they hung him on that old rugged cross. Outside of Jerusalem and Gotham, they hung him up. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. Pilate told him, I got power to give your life. He said, Pilate, you don't have no control over me. I lay my life down and I get it up. Yeah, yeah. The adversary, the devil in hell were rejoicing because they talk about this boast. Look at it. He's hanging on the Roman cross. And then at that ninth hour, when he gave it up, cried out to his father from the cross. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabatana. My father, my God, Abba, why have you forsaken me? But God could not stand and look on the presence of sin. Jesus assumed for himself the sins of the world and separated himself from the Father. Yes. The Roman soldiers pierced him in the side. Blood and water come running down. And he cried out. He cried out from that old rugged cross. He cried out, gave it the ghost, and said, it is finished. It is finished. My mission has been completed. Yes, Father, I honor my Father. I did what you told me to do. I honor my Father. I didn't back back. I didn't hold back. I didn't step back. But I always step forward. I said, God, why will you save me? I will go. What you want me to do, I will do it. Yes. Then they, Joseph and Matthias borrowed a tomb and said, well, can we have his body? You know, it was a borrowed tomb. He just needed it for a little bit. He wasn't going to stay there forever. Yeah, they buried him. The ladies heard past the Sabbath, just did a little stuff and pushed him on up in there. The wimps and hell dog, hound dogs in hell and everybody else. Threw a party, Mike, they threw a party. So we got him now. But little did they know. Little did they know that he was the son of God. And God said, I will vindicate my son. I will raise my son. I will justify my son. Lord, hear me. I've heard you before. And I will raise you up. So that Sunday night, they put on special details. So we got this boasting, and he been doing miracles and stuff. And he may try to pull a fast one. So let's double the guards. Let's double everything. Death, get some additional guards with you. But I'm here to tell you, my brother and sister, death, hell, and the grave couldn't hold him down. <laughs> death, hell, and the grave couldn't hold him down. So early in hell, he went to hell, by the way, to preach to the disbelievers. There was a rumbling. Things began to shake. And somebody said, I think he's trying to get out. <laughs> hold on, hold him, don't let him go. Somebody said, I can't hold. Hold hard as you can. But they didn't realize it was the Son of God. Yes, yes. And so he got up. He got up. Not in, not in spirit. He got up bodily. Yes, he did. So early, early. He got up. Look at him. Look what he says. I got all power in heaven and earth in my hand. I got resurrection power. Moses died, but he didn't get up. Elijah died, but he didn't get up. I prayed for last week he's going to die again. But I got up. I got up. By my own power. By my own will. By my own purpose. I got up. And because I got up, you can get up. I tell you, that's why we live. Even though we close our eyes and go to the cemetery. But I tell you, when the angel call our name, our body's going to get up. When we die, we go to heaven instantly to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. That's why God deserves, he deserves our best church.
give him your best. Give your best to the master. Not no leftovers. Not no borrowed stuff. You know, sometimes people borrow stuff and give it to other folks. They don't even give out of their own abundance. Some of them borrow it. Give your best. Give your best to the master. Church today, we will give our best. The Lord deserves our best. Don't listen to yourself talking to yourself because you talk foolishness. You talk stupidity. The devil put crazy stuff in your head. Don't listen to yourself. Listen to the word of God. Let the world, let the word prevail. Let the word be the consummate authority for your life. And when it does, you will live. You will live through the storms. You will live through the rain. And I, when I say live, I'm talking about you living with joy. You will live through disappointments. You will live through abandonment. You will live through misunderstanding. You will live. You will live. Why will you live? Because he lives. You can live. The Lord, Jesus, Christ, the author, finished our faith. The great I am, the bright and morning star. Your shield, Joshua. He's Lord. Amen. He is Lord. He is Lord. Yes, and because of who he is, yes, sir. he blessed us. Yes, sir. He blessed us. But we praise him for who he is. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank if he never gave us anything, it would be in order to praise him. Oh, yeah. If he never blessed us, it would be in order to praise him. Why? Because he is Lord. He is God. Yes, he is. He's king of kings. Yes, Lord of lords. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So church, individually and collectively, let's just say, Lord, in a sober moment, pray about it. After you pray, don't just get up and say, Lord, I do it, because that's hot air. But say, Lord, you know, you've been talking to me. And Lord, I've been doing some stuff, and I thought it was doing pretty good. But you know what, Lord? I want you to talk to me. Lord, I want you to talk to me about giving my best to you. Because you deserve my best. Not my wife. Not my husband. Not my children. Not my job. Not my career. Not anything else. Lord, you deserve the best. You deserve the best, Lord. That's a personal commitment. Let us do it. Let us do it. Church, let us do it. For the glory of God. God bless you.